Welcome to this first video in the series Data Driven Decision Making by Xeno Analytics. In this video, we will introduce a model that describes how we make decisions the OODA loop. For more information on Xeno Analytics, please visit our website, xenoanalytics.com. This is Colonel John Boyd. John Boyd was an ace Air Force pilot. In the 50s, he was widely seen as the best fighter pilot in the U.S. Air Force. His work and research on maneuverability of fighter jets was critical to the redesign of the F-15 and the, very successful, design of the F-16. After his retirement from the Air Force in 1975, he started working on military strategy and decision-making. He came up with a model named the OODA loop. OODA stands for, Observation, Orientation, Decision, Action. This model is still widely used in the military and in business. In business especially its application to competitive strategy and decision making. In this video I will propose that it is a very useful model to describe data driven decision making. The OODA loop is the culmination of his work during three decades, in which he synthesized his observations and analysis of how fighter pilots decide, military history, mathematics, science, engineering, psychology and more. He made his first draft of this model in 1992. His last version is from 1996, a year before he died. His success, according to his obituary in the proceedings of the U.S. Naval Institute, could be traced to his mentality, and I quote, He had a secret weapon. His uninhibited imagination was tightly coupled to a maniacal discipline to follow the truth wherever it might lead, even if it meant trashing his own creations. Before we get to the actual OODA loop, it is important to give some background on John Boyd's thinking. His starting point is, that we need a way to survive in a world, that is uncertain, ever-changing, and unpredictable. We have to make our decisions in an environment, that is unconfined. Sometimes decisions cannot be made, and we have incompleteness in mathematics and logic. We also get inaccuracies in our observations due to numerical imprecision in the calculation and measurement processes. The quantum uncertainty gives us a more fundamental uncertainty. It basically implies, that measurement itself influences the system. Link this to the second law of thermodynamics and we have a situation, that we cannot measure precisely. We cannot calculate precisely. The basis of our calculations are incomplete, and entropy or chaos steadily increases. As Boyd puts it himself, and I quote, One cannot determine the character or nature of a system within itself. Besides all of that we have to contend with, irregular or erratic behavior from open, nonlinear processes or systems, with feedback. Incomprehensibility, because we are unable to completely consider spaghetti-like influences from ever-changing, erratic, or unknown outside events. Mutations, associated with environmental pressure, replication errors, or unknown influences in molecular and evolutionary biology, like, for example, new viruses, or other infectious diseases. Ambiguity, associated with natural languages. Think, for example, about the difference between American English and English English in the use of the verb, to table something. Novelty, generated by the thinking and actions of unique individuals and their many-sided interactions with each other like, for example, the internet or social media. This uncertainty assures, that we will never be perfect in our understanding, and that the world will always generate mismatches. These mismatches are central to the OODA loop. Observing, analyzing and synthesizing mismatches to new hypotheses and designs is, according to Boyd, the key path to improvement. In short, we can only learn from errors and mistakes. Based on this, Boyd gives short descriptions for science and engineering as, Science can be described as a self-correcting process of observations, analyses synthesis, hypothesis, and test. Engineering can be described as a self-correcting process of observations, analyses synthesis, design, and test. To handle these mismatches, we need to enter continuous loops. To quote Boyd, we must continue the whirl of reorientation, mismatches, analyses synthesis, over and over again, ad infinitum, as a basis to comprehend, shape, and adapt to an unfolding, evolving reality, that remains uncertain, ever-changing, unpredictable. Boyd describes, how we will use conceptual spirals for different situations. A not limited set of examples would be, 
we will continuously loop through a loop of exploration, discovery, and innovation. Our whole life we will loop through a conceptual spiral of learning, unlearning, and relearning. This is an important spiral, because, if we want to adapt, we need to be willing to unlearn as well as relearn. If we are not willing to do that, we will become obsolete. Dinosaurs as Boyd calls people like that. We will also go through spirals of comprehension what is happening, shaping the situation to our advantage and adapting to the new reality. So in summary, we will go through an unindig set of loops that cover, in the relevant context, insight, imagination, and initiative. Or, to quote Boyd, we will exploit this whirling, conceptual, spiral of orientation, mismatches, analyses synthesis, reorientation, mismatches, analyses synthesis, so that we can comprehend, cope with, and shape, as well as be shaped by that world and the novelty that arises out of it. The moral aspects of decision-making take center stage with Boyd. He distinguishes between moral interaction, described as, quote, moral interaction occurs when we live by the codes of conduct or standards of behavior that we profess, and others expect us, to uphold. And moral leverage, of which he says that we must, quote, surface as well as find ways to overcome, or eliminate those blemishes, flaws, or contradictions, that generate mistrust and discord, so that these negative qualities neither alienate us from one another, nor set us against one another, thereby destroy our internal harmony, paralyze us, and make it difficult to cope with an uncertain, ever-changing world at large. And, emphasize those cultural traditions, previous experiences, and unfolding events, that build up harmony and trust, thereby create those implicit bonds, that permit us as individuals and as a society, or as an organic whole, to shape as well as adapt to the course of events in the world. In short, we need to always, and continuously, evaluate and improve our moral code, and, when we live and act according to it, we need to let the world know. For optimal results, four qualities are key, variety, rapidity, harmony, and initiative. Variety refers to the number of alternative options, that are available for an action or a decision, or for collecting data for observation. It can also refer to the variety of skills, previous experiences, and insights that are working together. In short, diversity. Rapidity is the speed at which one can go through an OODA loop, and, also, how this speed can be adapted to the situation. Harmony is a combination of the ability of people to work closely together, to align their activities and to support and learn from each other. Finally, initiative, is the capability to take action, at the right time, with the right means, to implement the chosen alternative to affect change, or to adapt to change. All four qualities need to be present. Variety and rapidity without harmony and initiative lead to confusion and disorder, and, ultimately, to chaos. Harmony and initiative without variety and rapidity lead to, rigidity, uniformity, and predictability, and, ultimately, to non-adaptability. If all four are present, it will create adaptability to shape and adapt to an ever-changing environment. Finally, on the background, appreciation and leadership. Boyd prefers this label to command and control. He finds that label to restricting. Quote. Command, by definition, means to direct, order, or compel, while control means to regulate, restrain, or hold to a certain standard, as well as to direct or command. He prefers to use appreciation and leadership as a label. This function has the responsibility to arrange an environment that provides, for leaders and subordinates, the opportunities to continuously interact with the internal and external world, and with each other, in order to more quickly harmonize, design alternatives and take coordinated initiatives, needed to form an organic whole. It needs to have an implicit orientation, that provides, insight and vision, focus and direction, adaptability, and security. For the execution of this function, he describes, appreciation as, quote, recognition of worth or value, clear perception, understanding, comprehension, discernment, etc. The structure must provide assessment of what is being done in a clear unambiguous way. In short, the environment is goal and action driven. Members work together in a culture of cooperation, open communication, and esteem. Leadership, he describes as, quote, the art of inspiring people to cooperate and enthusiastically take action toward the achievement of goals. 
Leaders give direction in terms of what is to be done, also in a clear unambiguous way. In short, leaders are facilitators, motivators, enablers, unambiguous communicators, and inspirators. Finally, we get to the OODA loop itself. Often people try to simplify these types of models to a simple, sequential circle of steps. Can we do this for the OODA loop as well? If we would try to describe the OODA loop in this oversimplified view, we would need to draw all kinds of extra arrows to allow for the interactions and feedback loops. It would become a messy picture. So the answer is a resounding no. Now it's time to describe the OODA loop. Be it not the original, but one with some small adaptations. As mentioned in the beginning, OODA originally stood for observation, orientation, decision, action. In recent years the nouns have made way for the verbs. Observe, orient, decide, act. These verbs better represent that these are continuous activities. When describing the loop, it is best to start with the central activity. Orient. Boyd says of this activity, quote, Orientation is the schwerpunkt, or focal point. It shapes the way we interact with the environment. Hence orientation shapes the way we observe, the way we decide, the way we act. In this sense orientation shapes the character of present observation, orientation, decision, action loops, while these present loops shape the character of future orientation. It is also essential to keep in mind, that it is imperative for success to foster collaboration, different points of views, and different expertises. As Boyd states, quote, expose individuals, with different skills and abilities, against a variety of situations. Hereby each individual can observe and orient himself simultaneously to the others and to the variety of changing situations. We orient ourselves, according to Boyd, with an interplay of our cultural traditions, our genetic heritage, our previous experience, and the new information that we receive, with a process of analyzing and synthesizing to come to a new mental image of the world, that we can use to formulate a decision or a hypothesis. Again, this is not a sequential or ordered process. It is a continuous interaction between these five elements. The process is also continuously influenced by external factors like new information, interaction and discussion with others, and other feedback loops. The input, that we use to orient, comes from what we observe. Our observations are data. These observations are a reflection of what we have measured about unfolding circumstances, information that we get from the outside, and the data generated by our constant interaction with the environment. The observations, and especially mismatches that we identify, drive us to orient, or to reorient. The outcome of orienting is that we have a new mental picture, and are ready to decide. We formulate a decision or a hypothesis. Based on this formulation we can act. Either by taking an action based on our decision, or to test our hypothesis. Our action has an effect. As a side note, this is a small adaptation to the original OODA loop, that makes more explicit, that we and our decisions and actions are part of the system, and, therefore, influence and shape the system. We see the effect return in our observations through a feedback loop to our interactions with the environment and or changes in unfolding circumstances, and or outside information. This allows us to evaluate, or test, if the decision that we've taken, and the action as a consequence of that decision, have the expected result. We can now also identify possible new mismatches. There are multiple other feedback loops. Our decisions feedback into the observations. When we decide, we generate data. Every time we act we generate new observations. Or we may actually decide that a change is needed in the observations. In that case, our action has a direct effect on what and how we observe. An additional adaptation to the original is the feedback from orient to observe. While we are orienting, we may require additional new information from our observations. Although we could describe this as a separate OODA loop, in which we decide that we need new information and act to achieve that, this is usually not as explicit. So here we depict it as a separate, dashed, feedback loop. So here it is the OODA loop. This loop also describes modern data-driven decision-making. Basically we identify a mismatch or problem. We analyze the problem and the synthesis leads us to collect data or observations. We orient ourselves using either analysts or more advanced data science methods. 
we from hypotheses and test these, like, for example, early predictive or machine learning models, or new dashboards. And, finally, we use the results to act. With the goal to shape our environment, for example by implementing a recommendation engine on our website, or by using traffic density predictions to adjust our route to our destination, or by providing easy dashboards for decision makers to help them orient. Thank you for watching this video. When you are interested in more materials on the OODA loop, we recommend that you look up a version of A Discourse of Winning and Losing by Colonel John R. Boyd, USAF, retired, edited and compiled by Dr. Grant T. Hammond, published by Air University Press in March 2018, or, for a wealth of additional resources, to start your research at colonelboyd.com. When you are interested in more information about Xenoanalytics, we invite you to visit our website at xenoanalytics.com.